In this video, I will demonstrate several scenarios of using timers and working calendars in the OptimaJet workflow engine. You will learn how to link timers with parameters, how to set their values, and what types of timers exist in the OptimaJet workflow engine. To do this, we will need to work with the OptimaJet workflow engine designer and have some C -sharp programming skills for simplicity. I'll be working in the workflow server, which is an admin panel with a REST API and a workflow engine already integrated into it. You can do the same in your business application with an integrated workflow engine. I have already prepared a simple order delivery scheme on which I will demonstrate the principles of timer operation. In this business process, an order is registered. And preparation by the seller begins by the command. After that, the status checking cycle starts. The status is checked at specified intervals. If the status changes, the shipment is considered sent. For the shipment on the way, a delivery date is set here. And upon reaching this date, the recipient has a return period. After which the order is considered complete and confirmed. Using different types of timers, I will enliven this schema. And as an example, we will use short intervals. The first timer will be an interval timer. To create it, let's go to the timers section and create a new timer called check interval. The interval type means that the timer will be triggered after reaching the outgoing activity. Upon the expiration of the specified interval, the transition will be made. I can specify any time interval here, like 5 days, 10 minutes, or 10 seconds. Let's keep it like that. Then add the timer to the scheme. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. It motivates us to create new informative videos. Now the check will start automatically. 10 seconds after the completion of the previous one. As a condition for further transition, we will use a simple code action. Randomly generating the result. Just for an instance. Next, let's look at the date timer. Create a new timer called delivery date. The date time type, as such as time and date types, sets a point in a timeline upon reaching which the transition will be made. Here I can specify any date and time value, but this type of timer is static. I'll not be able to change its value within the running process. To fix this, I'll create an expression timer. First I have to create a parameter. The timer will take its value from it. And let's create a new delivery date parameter. The type will be date time. Persistent purpose means that the value will be saved in the database, and I'll set standard zero time by default. Now I can specify the expression type for the timer. Here you can write any line of C-sharp code as an expression. And you can use the substitution notation to get parameter values. I'll use the parameter we just created, delivery date parameter. After reaching the on the way state, the final value of the timer will be dynamically set by the code action. Add a new set delivery date code action. And I'll put a few lines of code here. The parameter value will be set to 10 seconds ahead of the current time.
Let's add implementation to the activity. And to the transition as well. Now that the implementation has been added, the shipment will be considered delivered. 10 seconds after reaching the on the way state. Until the delivery is confirmed, the user can request a return. The confirmation of the shipment will happen after a certain time. But in that case, we will set the interval using a parameter. Create a new string parameter called return period. Specify the default interval in it. And now we can set the interval separately for each created process instance. I'll create a new return period timer. And specify the expression type. And just like last time, we use a parameter value substitution. Add the timer to the transition. Now, upon reaching the delivered state, the shipment will be considered confirmed after the interval specified in the parameter has elapsed. Now we can save the schema and start testing it. First, let's create a process instance using the Workflow Server API. I will specify the return period value as a 5 seconds interval. To start preparing, I will execute the command start preparation. As you can see, the preparation state is reached and checking cycle was started. Judging by the transition history, several checks have been performed. Now, after a successful check, the shipment has been given the on-the-way state. The delivery date timer value is set 10 seconds ahead, so we can already observe the transition. And the return period should end in 5 seconds. As you can see, the scheme is completed by confirming the order. Often, when working with timers, we are interested in an interval tied to the workweek. If you have a specific schedule and you do not want transitions to occur on weekends or holidays, you can use the working calendars feature. First, we need to configure at least one working calendar. You can add a calendar when initializing the workflow runtime instance, use the with calendars builder method. I will create a calendar called working week. Here I can specify the eighth working hours per day. The start time of the workday at 10 o'clock. Set Saturday and Sunday as weekend days. By adding years to the calendar, I can also add a holiday map for the current and future years as well. For example, I want to specify Christmas days.
I creating a current year and adding two holidays for December. For December 25th. And for December 26th. The calendar is ready. Next we can restart workflow server. Now I can connect the calendar to the scheme and process info panel here. Calendars can be used in timers. Let me edit the check interval timer value. To specify working days just add the prefix W to your unit of measurement. So I can specify one working day, or hour, or minute. In this case, the order status will not be changed on weekends and holidays, and out of the working hours. By now, you know how to link timers with parameters, set their values, and understand the various types of timers available. Additionally, you can use working calendars for more detailed timer customization. If you find this video helpful, share as much as possible to create awareness. I hope we can explain different scenarios for using timers in a workflow engine. Please write in the comments if there's anything you didn't understand. Thank you for watching this video to the end.